So this workout is going to be a high intensity, minimal rest workout. We're going to go for three rounds in total and each round is going to consist of three exercises. We're going to be hitting biceps, triceps and abdominals. So the first round, which is round one, we're going to go close grip, bicep, pull up. We're going to go for 15 reps. With no rest, we're going to go straight into rope cable push downs for tricep. Again, hitting 15 reps, and then we're going to go straight into an incline sit-up, 15 reps, no rest. If the rep ranges are too easy for you, obviously increase the rep ranges to make it harder, or increase the amount of times you do each round. For me, I just do this three times. Because we're going to be hitting three rounds in total, it's going to be three exercises for bicep, three for tricep, and three for abdominals. Again, because we're doing high intensity um, and minimal rest periods, you're going to be pretty fatigued by the end of this workout. So we're going to move in to the second round, which is going to be standing single arm cable curls. We're going to go for 15 reps again. Once completed the 15 reps, we're going to go straight into single arm push downs on a cable. Again, aiming for 15 reps, making sure each rep is slow and controlled. Because we're not going mass weight, you've got no excuses for bad form. It's all about getting that peak contraction, holding it, squeezing, and making the most out of each rep. And to finish that round, we're gonna do a decline lying leg raise. So this is one of my favorite exercises for building the midsection. Because you're gonna be engaging your core at all times, you're gonna be hitting the lower abdominals and your V, and we're also gonna be hitting the upper abdominals as well. So it's a great all round midsection exercise. So the final round is going to consist of alternate bicep curls with your palms open faced, keeping the full contraction on the bicep that you're not using. So at all times you're going to be fully contracted on each arm. We're going to go for 15 reps before moving straight on to standing skull crushers. This is going to be a straight set, nice and steady, 15 reps. Try to push the weight, but obviously make sure your core is, is tight at all times and you're not arching your lower back. To finish this round, we're gonna do cable wood chops. Um, if you've watched any of my videos before, these are one of my favorite exercises for obliques. And the reason for that, you don't need to go really heavy. Because you've got the resistance on the cables, you're gonna get constant tension throughout the whole movement. And because obliques are only a small muscle group, there's no need to push the weight and overcompensate with, with bigger, larger muscle groups that surround your obliques. One tip I'll always say, when trying to plan your midsection workouts, think of your obliques as a twisting motion rather than a crunching motion. That way you're gonna define your obliques but you're not gonna widen your waist. So there you have it guys, that's my um, high intensity, minimal rest workout for today. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, give it a try and let me know how you get on. Right, so we're into the third check-in with you on the 2020 Mr. Olympia Prep. As you will have seen this week, uh, the dates have now changed from September to December, I think 16th to 18th, so the week before Christmas. And um, what that means for me is I've got an extra three months to factor in um, and just 
basically slow the process down. So this week, my stats haven't really changed because I'm still weighing the same. Um, if anything, I might have got a little bit leaner and I'm, just, I'm sorry it's a bit vague. Until I can see Dan and do my actual calibre readings, it's just a bit like going off, off, off the eye and looking in the mirror and stuff and how I feel. But um, the pumps are good because I've increased uh, my calories now. Uh, again, it's still regimented, it's still clean, and in this vlog, or maybe the next one, I'm going to show you in more detail about what food and why I'm taking them at certain times of day. Um, but I'm still excited for it, like I say, I'm in prep now, uh, we're training hard. Next week, I will be doing a few sessions in my local gym, Good Bodies. Um, it's still going to be closed off to the public, um, but Dan, the owner, has been my training partner for... 11 years now um, and he's been kind enough to give me a key to be able to train in there um, on specific days so obviously big back days and leg days I think they're the two days I'm going to be mainly doing down there um, and then we'll just play by ear like I say I'm going to check in with you uh, a week from today um, and like I say there should be a few little changes uh, but not too much this early on because I think we're about six months six months out still yeah, so we've still got a long way to go, but I'm in prep. Aww. It means business. Barbecue day. Yeah. So at the minute I'm barbecuing twice a week. So probably on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Uh, and a Saturday or a Sunday, depending. So we've got chicken breast, uh, these are all from my sponsors Muscle Food um, and we've got fillet steaks. Um, normally, or well, not normally, but off season I would go for like burgers <laughs> um, or ribeye just or a sirloin, something like that. But then when, when I start prep I go into a leaner cut of meat which is a fillet steak. So this would normally last me like I say. But I have uh, an egg meal, a uh, salmon meal also, uh, and an oatmeal as well. Uh, I started to decrease the calories and be a bit more regimented because obviously we, we were going into the Olympia prep. But after this week's news about it uh, being postponed a bit longer, I'm still going to be in prep. There's no excuses now, my head's in it. Um, but I'm just going to try and increase the calories, reduce um, the amount of cardio I'm doing in the morning. So I've been doing about 40 minutes. Maybe even eat before that, that cardio in the morning, um, but just stay in routine and, and see if we can make some improvements. I still want to try and make some improvements in my triceps if we can, um, and a few other areas. Yeah, so this is a, I'm not sponsored by these guys, Jim Chef, absolutely brilliant. I think they're, yeah, they're a UK based company, um, but this just all mixed spices, macro friendly as well. lost them because it went over 28 days which is supposed to be the time for ducks hatching uh, and then yeah a couple of days ago absolutely class they all just strolled out rocky nearly got one of them in his mouth <laughs> but um, yeah they all survived so uh, job done <laughs> dr doolittle oh no it's done come on give us some cooking tips oh god some cooking <laughs> Just make sure you thoroughly cook it through. <laughs> Don't give your pregnant wife salmonella. <laughs> Food poisoning. <laughs> Cooking with Terry. Cooking with Terry. Voila! There we go. Got some fillets down here for you guys. Or for me. Uh, most of my preps have been 12 weeks, so three months. Um, and I can normally get ready quite well uh, within that 12 week. But one prep, which, that last year, yeah, not last year, but we did uh, 
uh, 16 weeks. But it was mainly like the, the four weeks of just mass eating, you know, just getting into a routine, but just trying to really ramp the calories up. Because obviously the best thing on prep is when you start your prep is to try and have the intake of calories at your maximum. So trying to get up to like four and a half thousand calories for my body type and uh, size and height. Um, is a great starting point because then you've got so many calories to play with as you come down. Um, if you're starting your prep quite lean and you're on two and a half thousand calories, you've not got much scope um, and you're going to quickly run out of steam. So um, for me, we've always tried to ramp it up so we can start at a higher level before we start to run down. So today we are talking about my USN supplement stack. Um, as you're all aware that I'm now in the early stages of the 2020 Olympia prep and these are the products that I'm taking currently. So the first product is the USN 3XT pump. So this is a pre-workout and this is something I'm taking sporadically. So I'm not taking it every day. Um, and the reason for that is I'm not huge on caffeine. I'm, I'm uh, a bit sensitive to it. So if I was to have it every day, I don't know what would happen. Um, so this is when I'm feeling a bit fatigued, a bit tired, and I just need that extra boost. Also, this product is classed because of L-Arginine in it. Most pre-workers have it. Uh, this is a good amount for blood flow, which is gonna help with the pump whilst training. It's got 200 milligrams of caffeine in, um, so it's more than enough to get that, that focus um, and to help with endurance and performance when you're training. So the next product I'm gonna talk about is which I take pre and intra. So this is something I, I add a scoop to the pre-workout if I'm gonna take it, or I take it on its own whenever I'm not taking the pre-workout. So this is a pre and an intra workout. Uh, this is a BCAA, which is branched chain amino acids, and essential amino acids, EAA blend. Uh, there's glutamine in here also, and there's less than a gram of sugar. So it's ideal if you're dieting, uh, for, for instance, and you're counting your calories. Also, this is a great prevention of muscle breakdown and it helps the body recover after training. So for me, this is something I've taken from the very start joining uh, USN and it's something I do believe in. I know there's a bit of controversy about BCAA, but for me, I wouldn't take that out of my, uh, my diet. So the next product I'm gonna talk about is the Creatine Anabolic. So this is an all-in-one creatine blend uh, and this is something you can take post-workout or what I tend to do is take it intra um, and I sip on it through my training. Um, this is a great way of helping with stamina, building endurance, and obviously building muscle when you're training. A lot of people can be fearful of taking it when they're dieting because obviously it's, creatine is renowned for holding water, but within a three or four days of you taking this out of your diet, you'll lose the water which uh, you're holding from the retention. So uh, I massively rate this, uh, and again, it's something I will take in stages. So I'll do maybe two months on, month off, then go again. And like I say, when I'm dieting, it's still in my diet. You just have to factor the carbs, which is around 46 grams per serving, but there's only four grams of that, which is sugar. But still, it's something you want to uh, factor in when you're dieting. So the last product I'm gonna to talk to you about is probably one of the most important, and this is the Blue Lab Whey. So this is a blend of protein, and it's a, an isolate, a hydrolysate, and whey concentrate. There's less than two grams of sugar per serving. There's 130 calories per serving, and 25 grams of protein per serving. It's lactose intolerant, so it, obviously if you're struggling with milk or dairy, this is a product that's not gonna upset you. Um, and for me, I would take this first thing in the morning or post-workout. It's ideal any time of the day, but for me, it's all about getting the, the nutrients back into the body as quick as possible. And those are the two times which I feel are the most important. One, when you've fasted over eight hours, when you've slept and you've not eaten anything, it's good to get a quick, fast absorbing protein into the body straight away. And then same post-workout when you've depleted all your glycogen, you're trying to get the nutrients back into the body. So it's ideal for a man or a woman, and even if you're dieting, maintaining, or trying to build muscle, it's a great all-round product. So there you have it, guys. These are the four products that I take from USN. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video and taken something from it. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.